Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com and I'm here to review the Chromebook Flip from Asus. I can actually do this because it's only two pounds. It's super light, it's a 10.1 inch Chromebook and I was skeptical about a couple things. One of them being the Chrome OS in general and then also how much I'm actually gonna use the flip function where you can convert it into a tablet. You can use it in this mode or you can just flip it up and use it in laptop mode. Now there's a two gigabyte of RAM model and a four gigabyte of RAM model, one of them being 250, the other one being 280. And in my opinion, it's probably worth it to get the four gigabyte model, which is what I have here. I have been extremely impressed with how premium this device is. It's all aluminum all the way around. It has a nice trim to it and overall just has a really sleek look and feel to it. On the left side, you have DC in, which is a proprietary cable that comes with it. You have two status lights, one being for the battery, the other being for the status of the Chromebook itself. Volume up and down rockers, which is great when you're in tablet mode overall, and then also a power button as well. On the right side, you have a mini HDMI slot. You have two USB slots and also a micro SD card slot with expandable storage up to 64 gigabytes. And then also a headphone, 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone jack. Down at the bottom in the four corners, you'll notice four grips, and they do a really good job at grabbing the table or desk that you put them on. They also protect it when you flip it into a different mode. And then also you'll see two speakers, and they are really great. Honestly, they get loud, they're very clear. They don't get fuzzy when you turn it all the way up. However, when you use it in laptop mode, they're covered just a little bit. A little curve on the front helps it out. However, it does get covered up just a little bit. Opening the Chromebook flip up and you're greeted with a 10.1 inch HD IPS display with a screen resolution of 1280 by 800. And I've been very, very pleased with it. Uh, the colors look very true. Text is very clear as well. And whether you're inside or outside, it's very visible. So brightness gets very bright and also pretty dim as well. Now, when you do use it as a touchscreen, of course you do get fingerprints on it. However, they, it is pretty easily cleaned. So that's not that big of a deal. Now with a 10.1 inch device, the keyboard is very compact. It took me a little while to get used to. However, the keys have a decent amount of give, so you can kind of, and also space between them, so you can kind of tell which key you are pressing. You have some useful buttons up the top, including brightness, browser control, and volume. Uh, a couple gripes, I wish it was backlit. I mean, that's just something I like. There's no delete button, I really miss that. And also you can't, w w one thing to make note of is you can't accidentally press the lock button. You have to actually press and hold it down for it to actually lock the device. Now the trackpad is very responsive and gives good feedback. However, it is a little on the small side, especially when you're trying to use two and three finger gestures. There is no right click on the trackpad. You have to actually press with two fingers to right click. You have a compact keyboard option, and then you also have a full layout, which is really nice to have as an option. I find myself not using the on-screen keyboard for long things, maybe a, just a quick, uh, quick little message I need to send, but for long emails, I'll flip it around and use the actual keyboard. You also have emoji support, so if you want to send emojis or anything like that, and then you also can type. So uh, you have input. So if you were like, hey, how are you? Question mark. And it gives you this option up here to plug that in and it worked. Now when in laptop mode with its small size, it's not really something you want sitting on your lap. You definitely would rather have it on a desk or a table. Now overall battery life has just been really great. Honestly, I get eight to 10 hours battery life easily. So it gets me through the day and I've been super impressed with it. Now let's go ahead and talk about performance. Something I was wondering what was going to happen when I had a bunch of tabs open in Chrome. And when it comes to performance, the Chromebook Flip has a 1.8 gigahertz quad core rock chip processor, 16 gigabytes of SSD flash storage, two or four gigabytes of RAM. And then when you run an octane score for benchmarks, you get around 7,000. Benchmarks don't really mean anything to me. What really matters is real world performance. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about right now. And I've actually been pretty impressed with performance of it. Um, I'm really happy I can actually edit and create WordPress articles in here. I'm actually gonna go to my YouTube channel right here and then we're gonna load up just a quick video and we're gonna play it in the background and then load up a couple web pages at once. So this video is gonna be playing in the background. I have it muted, of course. And then let's go ahead and maybe uh, let's reload a page. I'm just gonna press reload on the keyboard. Let's go ahead and try and load up The Verge, which I really don't go to ever, but I know it's, pretty intensive so you'll see 
Google Plus still loading up, and then The Verge is loading up as well. Obviously, um, internet speeds play into this, but you'll see a little bit of checkerboarding, just a tiny bit there when, like I said, it's doing three things at once at the moment. Let's go ahead and load up an article as well and um, go through. And of course, I can use the trackpad and keyboard. I'm in laptop mode right now, and you'll see it's very fluid, very smooth. It loaded up all of those images pretty quickly, um, and I generally have eight to ten um, tabs open at once and I have been extremely impressed I've been able to fly through things occasional stuttering here and there but it's really nothing bad at all it's really really impressive now someone actually asked me to play a video off of a micro SD card so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I have a, actually an old micro SD card that I threw in there and I have a 1080p video you'll see 787 meg file and I'm gonna double click on it and open it and play it You'll see it's in full screen right here. It's just a video of mine. And here's skipping through it. You'll see no lag, no lag in loading, anything like that. It loads it right up. It's clear, everything like that. And so overall, I've been impressed with just storage. It reads the cards well uh, and does a very good job. Now, when it comes to printing from the Chromebook, I was a little skeptical, but I honestly had a good experience with it. My printer wasn't Google Cloud Print ready. However, it does connect to Wi-Fi. So uh, you'll see I added it to Google Cloud Print through the Wi-Fi connection and printed something out right away. It was actually very simple. So if you have a printer that does connect to Cloud Print or the Wi-Fi in general, then you should be able to print to it. Now, when it comes to the Chrome OS, like I said, I was a little skeptical. However, I actually like it a lot more than I thought I would. I, I mean, I just use a browser a lot more than I thought I did. And uh, overall, I can get a lot done with it. Chrome apps are okay. Um, you have extensions, of course. Anything you can do in a Chrome browser, you can essentially do on here. You do have some games. If you click this search in the bottom left-hand corner, brings up this launcher so to say it uses your lace last used apps you scroll down and you have Google now as well which is a nice integration and then also you can go to all apps as well now you can't really add anything to the desktop you can auto hide shelf shelf position and set wallpaper so there's a lot of blank space right here it's actually pretty easy to navigate it's very similar to Windows so it wasn't a big learning curve at all the Chrome Web Store in general is okay it's not very well categorized and there aren't really that as many apps as you'd like there to be unfortunately um, you'll see you have certain things runs offline by Google available for Android which is another good thing because it does have Android apps cut the rope Tank War, uh, you just have Solitaire, certain ones, but I mean main ones such as Snapchat, uh, I don't really see any Reddit clients, which is okay though because Reddit clients, you can just go to reddit.com and have a desktop experience. But overall, I found myself using this as a replacement real quick instead of my laptop and just using my laptop more for heavy things, maybe occasional gaming. Um, when it comes to video editing, of course, I'm going to use my laptop, my full laptop, my high-powered one as opposed to a Chromebook. But this actually is a really nice addition, and it's extremely portable. Now, there's actually an HD webcam up at the top as well for video chatting. And I actually was impressed with how well it handled video chatting, whether I could see them clearly. It didn't stutter much. And also myself as well. The camera did a decent job. To give you an idea, I'm going to stand up. And there's my face. Hey, guys. It's actually... Okay quality, I'm I'm not upset with it. You have a bunch of options within this software. You have filters, you can take a quick picture, uh, toggle mirroring, you see there's here's the a bunch of different filters down at the bottom. So if you like, like to do that, you can play around with taking pictures with a friend or someone like that. Now one little problem I have with the OS is when I'm in tablet mode, you can't actually resize the screen and move it around. It's just in full screen. Let's say I open up the calculator and you'll see it just loads it up in full screen mode. I can't make it smaller at all, a little box, anything like that. So that's only when you're in touchscreen mode, laptop mode, you can do all of those things. All right, just want to recap, give some of my final thoughts on the Chromebook Flip, and I really do like it. Honestly, I didn't. I like it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, it's super premium, it's super portable, which allows me to bring it with maybe to a coffee shop or something if I want to do something real quick and don't need a heavy powered PC to do it. Yeah, the, the Chrome OS is okay. The web store could be a lot better. Um, however, just using the Chrome browser, if a lot of the things you do in the Chrome browser, even Google Docs, anything like that, it's not too bad at all to use. Coupled with a great screen, great performance, and great battery life, 
I'd say it's a go for me. If you're in the market for a Chromebook, this is the one I'd go for, especially being able to convert it to tablet mode. It's great when you're in bed, honestly, um, or watching a movie or something, flipping it up to, I guess, this convertible mode. It's really helpful uh, watching Netflix, anything like that. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions about the device, feel free to drop a comment and I'll do my best to reply to it. Subscribe to me as well. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. All links in the description video below. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.